Billy Fingers here, playing English Billiards. A game played with three balls, two cue balls, white and yellow, and a red object ball. There are many different ways to score in English Billiards. If you pot the red object ball, that is worth three points. Anytime the red is potted, it is then spotted back on the table. If you pot your opponent's cue ball, that is worth two points. Anytime your opponent's cue ball is potted, it stays down until your turn is over. If you pot your cue ball off of the red, that is worth three points. If you pot your cue ball off your opponent's cue ball, that's worth two points. Anytime your cue ball is potted, it gets placed anywhere in the kitchen. If your cue ball makes contact with the two other balls, that is worth two points. If you perform a cannon and pot the red, that will be five points. A cannon and potting the cue ball would be 4 points. Potting the red and pocketing your cue ball is 6 points. Potting your opponent's cue ball and pocketing your cue ball is 4 points. To begin the game, you lag to see who will shoot first. You can play to a certain number of points, or you can play to a time limit. When time expires, whoever has the most points is the winner. Here we will play to 60 points. A common shot to start a match would be to bank the red ball back towards the head string. The idea is to get both the cue ball and the red ball behind the head string. This is done because the incoming player is not allowed to hit any of these balls. They have to go up table first. So for a legal shot, I have to cross the head string. Now one approach would be a one rail bank, or as you see here, making sure that my cue ball is in the kitchen I can go three rails, pocket the red, and also pocket the yellow, worth six points. A more aggressive way to start a match would be to attempt to bank the red ball into the corner pocket. This will give you three points and start you on an early lead. And as you see, the red ball always comes back up into the same spot. It's the same spot where on a snooker table the black ball would be placed. Now I'll attempt to pocket the cue ball off the red ball, and as you see, that's three more points. Now unfortunately, the red ball went past the head string, and with cue ball in hand, I have to always shoot past the head string. So one option is to cross the head string with enough right English to pull the cue ball back so I can make contact with the red. So I played safe, now my opponent comes to play, and he will utilize the yellow cue ball. Now he has the same dilemma where he cannot hit either ball because they're behind the head string. So he can do a similar shot where he'll go three rails and make contact with the white, pocketing that cue ball. So he gets two points, but now that cue ball is off the table. By not having that third ball on the table, it really limits what you can do. So as you see, he plays the in-off shot, gets three points as it's off the red. And the object now is to try to capitalize and go on runs. Make as many points as you can while controlling both the object ball and the cue ball. With the red ball always being spotted at this end of the table, typically you want to stay at this end of the table. You want to play as many soft shots as you can. So in this case, they'll just make the red and draw back, knowing the red's going to come right back up to the same spot. And you want to just leave yourself as many chances as you can at simple shots. Many times, like here, you have a choice of you can just pocket the red or you can play the in off and try to pocket the yellow. As you see, I was caught in between and wasn't sure which one to do, which resulted in a miss. So that leaves the ghost with 11 points. So now as I take the cue ball, I'm going to play the red into the corner, but at the same time, I know I'm going to scratch. So I get the benefit of the full six points. Now it's an interesting concept I know for many who are always taught not to scratch. But in this game, making a ball and scratching actually is a good thing. So you start to get used to how to control that cue ball, how to position it. Now with ball in hand, I'll perform a cannon, get two points, and I've also potted his cue ball. So that's another two points. Now let me just fast forward a little bit. Now normally I would never want to sink or pot the opponent's cue ball. I really rather leave all three balls on the table. But just to give you this demonstration, I wanted to show you what it's like to be stuck with only two balls and how to work position when all you have is the red object ball and your cue ball. So 
I'm gonna try something different now and instead I'm gonna try to scratch on purpose. So again, you see I missed the scratch because again, as a regular pool player, we're not used to scratching. So this gives my opponent a chance to come right back up to the table. And what I'll do now is I'll really focus better on scratching. So I'm gonna not only try to make the red, but I wanna scratch and make the yellow at the same time. And as you see, with a little bit more focus, it's a lot easier to do. So that's gonna be worth six points. So the ghost can slowly catch up now. As I fast forward the match here, I wanna point out that what makes this game very difficult to play is actually playing it on a proper English billiard table, which is actually a snooker table that's 12 feet. Now, snooker tables are actually English billiard tables. English billiards came first. Snooker, when it was later invented, just adopted the same table. So that's really what changes this whole game around, is playing on that wider table with those tighter pockets. Once you're able to master all the different ways of scoring, whether a cannon, an in-off, possibly potting two balls at once, it can change how you view the game and how you go on certain runs. The best players always keep all three balls at the bottom of the table constantly respotting the red, respotting the red, and playing cannons over and over again, and going on really high runs. And once in a while you want to play safe, because as you see, I went on a run and I was at 55 points, but with that uncertain miss, the Ghost now has an ability to catch up very fast. He's at 33, he's just potted again, now he's at 38, pots another red for 41, now he has a simple cannon, 43, another red for 48. Now it's getting a lot easier to scratch on purpose. So there's 50. I'm now gonna attempt the cross bank. This is gonna then take me to 52. Now all I have to do is make one more red and I tie the game. So here we go, take my time, cut the red in, tie game at 55. So the ghost has caught up relatively quickly. The only downside from that run was pocketing the opponent's cue ball. By doing that, I only have this one option. And now by missing that bank, the ghost turns the game back over to me. So whenever possible, you want to leave all three balls on the table to give you as many options as possible. Since I'm only playing a 60, I know all I need to do is pocket the yellow for two points, then pocket the red for three. So I'm just going to pocket the yellow and come around five rails and I'll have shape for the red. As I make the red for my 60th point, I complete the game. That's my take on English Billiards. Till next time.